Don't you just love it when you were supposed to do a top 5 books and it turns into a top 10 books? Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things and today I have a really, really exciting video at least a really exciting video for me I hope it's an exciting video for you It's no like big secret that I love sci-fi I freaking love reading sci-fi. If anybody asks me what my favorite genre for reading is, I would 100% say science fiction, my friend, which I don't I don't know if that's good or bad, but here we are. So, I know science fiction isn't like the thing that most everybody likes on booktube. First, I was going to do like a top 5 science fiction books to read on my channel, but then I was like, I can't just pick 5, so I picked 10. So we're going to get right into it. Now I have three categories here, and in the end, I'm actually going to unveil my favorite book of all time. And I'm really excited to unveil it. I'm going to warn you, you might be disappointed, but we're gonna get to it. So the first category I have for this video is sci-fi for those people that are just starting to get into sci-fi or aren't even into sci-fi right now and would really like to start. So I'm gonna recommend for you this wonderful middle grade series called The Search for One Lie by Tony DeTerlitzi. Don't be fooled, don't be fooled. Middle grade has amazing sci-fi and I think this is probably one of the best. If you haven't seen me rave and rant and review this over and over, this book is about Eva Nine. She's a girl who is inside a pod underground and she's being raised by a robot and she has never seen another human being in her life. And for circumstances that I don't want to spoil for you, she has to leave said pod and she's really excited because she really wants to meet other humans except that when she leaves the pod she finds that not only might she be the only human left in all of existence but that she might not even be on earth at all if you're looking for a fun quick read something that is almost i'm sorry i'm gonna say this a lot because star wars was my favorite science fiction, it's actually a western movie of all time. I, I'm gonna say this a lot, but this is very Star Wars y to me. This is very Luke Skywalker figuring out who he is as a kid. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you like Star Wars, maybe it makes sense to you. But yeah, The Search for Wanda is a wonderful book and it's a great way to get a little bit into sci fi without, you know, getting into <laughs> super <laughs> intense, like throw you out there science fiction. You know, if you really want to get a little bit taste for the genre and also for beautiful, amazing characters and for one of the most incredible world buildings, like scenarios that I have ever seen in literature, then please pick up Search for Wondla by Tony DiTrilizzi. It's actually three books. I have the trilogy back here, but I also have the hardcover of the first one because I love this hardcover so much. And this book comes illustrated with beautiful illustrations. I can never show illustrations off. But anyway, it's like Star Wars meets The Last Airbender. There you go. Love it. And this is great for you to get into like really soft sci-fi. The next book I have for those of you that want to dip your toes into this amazing genre is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Now this book is relatively new and the science fiction aspect of this really is minimal in comparison to the character dynamics and the found family aspect of it and it it deals a lot with AI and what we're maybe going to have to deal with in the future when it comes to AI and the rights of machines to exist and honestly I like this book for beginners because it it has more of a found family aspect than a hardcore science fiction space isolation very philosophical wanderings this is just a great book and, and just so we're clear i'm not saying that these that this is any less important within the genre because it doesn't have that that kind of stuff oh i'm gonna sneeze <coughs> excuse me <laughs> What I am saying though is that if you are just starting with science fiction and aren't really into that kind of 
Prometheus, you know the movie Prometheus, uh, that kind of stuff. This is more for you. And also I find that a lot of science fiction books, I don't know why we associate, well I do know why I did a dissertation on it, but <laughs> we tend to associate science fiction with horror and this is not horror at all or a thriller. In fact, I don't think any of the books I picked fall into that category. So even if you have like anxiety, in fact, this book was recommended to me for when uh, I had a lot of anxiety. This book is basically the story of a group of misfit crew members that have to punch a hole in space and they get caught up in political problems. It's great, I love it. So this is my second recommendation. The next book I have, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of like a lot and that is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Now I this is the second book I read this year and I loved it except until the end but then I read Starsight and everything made sense. This is actually a series and honestly I think this is a good jump from people that love fantasy because it's the same author Brandon Sanderson so if you like his writing we're already halfway there and what I like about this book is again very Star Wars feel, but imagine that Star Wars, imagine the idea of the pilots from Star Wars just training to kill the people from the Empire. That's what, that's what this book made me feel like. That is literally what this book made me feel. This book tells the story of Spensa. She's stuck in a planet. She doesn't understand why. They have always been there in this planet and they are constantly under attack by these species called the Krell and only like elite people get to become pilots and fight and Spencer really wants to become a pilot but because of something in her past she's not allowed to but you know things happen and sometimes the least likely person to be the hero is the hero. The science fiction aspects of this story are again really soft. Uh, I think it gets a little bit more philosophical in the second book but this is a great way to start your science fiction journey. And this is actually YA, so if you really enjoy YA, this is definitely the book for you. All right, and finally for the introduction to science fiction, I actually have the Oxford Book of Science Fiction Stories. Now you can't see, but this book has been through the ringer. I actually had to read this book for a course in the university because I took a science fiction writing not writing, a science fiction literature study course in the university. Holy shit, you're a nerd. What I like about this is that this has short stories from many, many, many different authors. And if you're not sure whether science fiction is for you, this is a good way to just read a little bit. You don't have to read the whole thing. In fact, I, rare, I, I read it once for class and then I just keep reading the stories that I really like and that way you get a feel for all the different kinds of science fictions there are because a lot of people think science fiction is just space travel but a lot of people don't realize that science fiction okay sorry things look a little bit strange but my camera battery died I always wondered how that happened to booktubers or youtubers or anything but yeah, going back to this book anyway. Science fiction encompasses so many different things and it can go from so many different settings. Like people don't realize that. It doesn't only have to be about space. So I think this is a great way to find out what you like and what you don't like about science fiction. The way I would go through this is I would actually just flip um, to the contents and read the ones like read the stories that most call out to you because of the names honestly that's how i read i that's how i read this book now and um i have five or six different stories here that really call to me and i love and maybe you'll find a new favorite in here and maybe you'll get into science fiction up next i have books for those of you that like action that are like monica very cute and all of this all of this science fiction but what i really want is Space fights, dog fights in space, I want training programs in space, I want that kind of stuff. So for you, the first one I'm going to recommend is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. I have read this in my Kindle, that's why you're seeing the lovely picture over here. So this is the story of a sec unit. A sec unit is a security unit. It's a robot that is taught, like it's not taught, it's programmed to kill anything that might harm humans that um, he is under contract with. The thing about this particular, this particular sec unit is that he is actually self-aware and he's conscious. 
and he thinks for himself and I think that this book is so interesting first of all it's actually a novella so you can read it pretty quickly and what really drew me into this book was actually that it introduces a new aspect to machines becoming self-aware that I had never seen in any other book before and this book is just action-packed this is action from the start to the end of it so if that's your kind of spiel try out all systems read by Marsha Wells you might enjoy it then <laughs> the next book I have in this section is Starship Troopers by Robert uh, Robert A. Hanlon that's I think how you say that and listen this is a book about cadets in space there's nothing else that I can say about this this does follow a one of the cadets and it what I like about this book is that the women in this book are badass boss ass bitches okay like they are treated exactly the same as men and uh, they can have casual sex and casual relationships and even though it is very heteronormative it's still kind of cool to see that in a science fiction novel now the thing about this that I warn people about is if you've seen the movie you haven't read the book like literally the director of the movie was like I didn't even read the book when I got the project so this is following the story of these cadets that go to fight these alien in this aliens that have been invading earth and now this does have a really like military setting like if you're all about the military stuff this is the book for you although it is kind of a little bit intense on that like for example in this society people can't vote unless they go into the military so it is kind of brainwashy and stuff but you know what it's a fun action-packed read and i really enjoy it because of that so if action is your thing, try Starship Troopers. You might really like it. The next book I have for like action-packed uh, training, space tr training, travel, but that is a little bit less, like it's a little bit more philosophical, is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Now we're not going to get into Orson Scott Card and his deplorable ideas about homosexuality which is funny because this has some homosexual erotic undertones that I'm not even gonna get into but anyway this book is about Ender and in this society there have been these monster like alien creatures that are very insect like which is by the way I don't know why we tend to think insects are <laughs> the like ultimate alien species because all of, most of these books have like insect aliens in them but anyway this is um the story about ender who is a little boy who is like off the charts in intelligence and the whole point of the book is him learning to become a leader for his human people so that they can defeat the aliens that have been attacking them over and over and this book is incredible this is like starter sci-fi for most people and what I like about it is that it does have a little bit of philosophical element at the end but really what we focus on is the space training and honestly I always I always pitch this I'm sorry I love Star Wars but I always pitch this as what Han Solo was doing after the return of the Jedi like he was just training cadets <laughs> like there's a character in here that is basically Han Solo so if you like Han Solo and you like that aspect of Star Wars then Skyward and Ender's Game might be for you I warn you this can be a little slow because it does touch on that whole philosophical space stuff are we alone uh, uh, what is intelligence why are we fighting against these people but honestly it's mostly about training in space so that concludes the portion of like beginner beginner entry level sci-fi now what about if you've already read some of this stuff and you're like monica i want more i want more hard sci-fi baby i got you it's okay we're here together we're in this together and i'm gonna suggest Solaris by Stanislav Lem. Now, if you saw my book to movie adaptation project, then you saw that in the beginning, I was gonna give this book three stars. And then by the end, it was a five fucking star book. 
This book talks about sentience. This book talks about gods. This book talks about humans and how humans view other creatures. This book talks about space isolation. So basically, this book is like it encompasses everything that science fiction tends to do. Space isolation, what are humans, what makes us humans, what makes us sentient, and first contact with aliens, and also how do we know that what aliens see us like. That is an incredible thing in this book. The only thing that I... Sorry, my nose is just... I'm having allergies. The only thing I will warn you about with this book is that it can get a little bit slow and a little bit bogged down like in the middle of it. Just skim read those parts but I promise you the end of this book is worth it and just this is one of those books where you have to sit down and really have like a cathartic moment about it because it's just mm, it just it's again it's one of those things this is what I like about science fiction that sometimes you just kind of have to sit back and be like wow what did I just read you know like what is this saying about us what is this saying about humans what is this saying about the world um I didn't give a synopsis this book is about a psychologist who is called onto this station on this planet called Solaris which has been studied for many years because the ocean on Solaris seems to have some kind of sentience or to be some kind of living form but there is no intelligence within it that we have found and basically he gets called on there because something weird is going on his old I think professor or his old friend from college calls him and he's like hey I need you he gets there and he finds that everything is like a clusterfuck seriously and what happens next, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's incredible. I also recommend watching the movie. In fact, I actually recommend watching the movie first before you go into this book so that you kind of have an idea more or less of what it is that you're getting into. All right, the next book in this category is The Stone Gods by Jeanette Winsterson. I'm sorry you can't see this cover, white balance. But anyway, this is the story about love. And the science fiction aspect in the story is unlike anything I have ever seen because it mixes mythology with science fiction. Basically, um, I'm going to go through them a little bit quickly because my camera is flashing. But this is the story of how we fucked up planet Earth. We found another planet and we have to get there. And there is a scientist here who is a little bit on the like... She's not into technology that much. She'd rather live like a much more normal life. And then we have other characters here that really make us question where technology is going and how scary it is where it might be going. There is also a sapphic romance in this um, story that is tragic but beautiful and I really appreciate that in Jeanette Winter Winterson's books. It, this book wow this book man it's it's really really something else i really wish more people would read it i don't think it's her most well-known book but um there is this whole scene in this book where these space pirates are taking these scientists to the new planet and they start to tell stories of planets they have encountered and what you start to see is that the planets they're talking about are actually based on greek and roman mythology so there's a planet that was hit by an asteroid and they say that it's anything that it's so scary that you are petrified to look at it because it looks like it has um rocks that look like snakes that float in the in in space medusa it's it's amazing so yeah this book also delves into the idea that love can transcend space and time and the plot at the end I kind of saw it coming but it was still one of those things where wow what what a great ending to a book it's it's kind of has a message an ecological beautiful message and I just 100% recommend that if you want to start to delve into like the more philosophical more like Space themes of isolation, human nature, and everything. 
this is just such a great book to start off with and honestly it's a quick read the vocabulary isn't crazy in it and i think you're gonna have a great time there is parts in this book where it wasn't my cup of tea because it was just wasn't what i was into but the parts that have to do about space are just mind-blowing also when I saw Interstellar by Christopher Nolan, I was like, wait a minute. Did Christopher Nolan low-key rip off Jeanette Winterson and made a movie and nobody knows about it? Because honestly, like that whole movie is in this book. Well, not all of it, but a lot of it is in this book. So definitely pick this up if you're looking for a very interesting, very kind of different sci-fi read. Now. You know it was coming. You 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 know me. You have seen this channel, and if you haven't and you haven't guessed it, boys and girls, you gotta get on the Binti train. All right, Binti is Afrofuturistic, which means that while most of these books talk about humans in the future, as if in, like we all kind of. Um, came together and agreed that white culture is like literally the culture that is the dominant in the future. Afrofuturism talks about African culture and it doesn't erase it from futuristic stories. Now, I have said this before, but this is the story of Binti. She is a gifted human being. She is one of the most intelligent people of her race. And she gets picked to go to a university called the Umza University where she's gonna study things that I don't understand nor pretend to understand. But the thing is, she gets caught up in this conflict between an alien race called the Medus and humans. And the rest of it is just amazing how she gets out of it, how this book talks about it does it's just philosophy set in space and those are the books that oof just talk to my heart man those are the books that do it for me and binti herself as a character is an amazing character and can we please stop erasing african culture from futuristic books that would be great hey now i know what you're thinking where is it i know you have it around here somewhere the number one book that I recommend for science fiction, but not for science fiction beginners, is Dune by Frank Herbert. This book is what I call my favorite book of all time. We're gonna find out in this video that that's not actually necessarily true because my favorite book of all time is just a book that nobody can get their hands on and i own i think two of like the 500 copies that exist in the world but we'll get to that but first let's talk about dune by frank herbert now the thing about dune is that dune doesn't hold your hand this is not a book for beginners of sci-fi this is a book for somebody that wants to go head first into sci-fi with no hand holding whatsoever in fact the first like 150 to 200 pages of this, I was like, this is the worst book I've ever read. And it turned out to be my favorite book of all time, or at least the one that is considered my favorite book of all time. This book, it, it just amazes me how old this book is because this book has people of color representation and they have them as the main characters and not as the antagonists, which is amazing. There is a bit of a colonial, I can never say that word, colonialism colonialism in the book but you know it was written by a white man in the 60s like <laughs> we're asking too much the, the thing about dune is that it's not only about the science fiction aspect this has political intrigue this has magic this has philosophical wanderings of what it means to be gifted what it means to want more for your children but at the same time not push them to the point where they believe themselves to be superior to everyone this book has a character that grows and learns and that fucks up and even though he is the chosen one he still struggles and he's not the best at everything and this book just has everything you want in it like i i just i can't understand how i've loved science fiction in film for so long without having read this because everything that i love about science fiction movies 
I've seen in this freaking book like lightsabers is here, the force is here, it's the, the, the political intrigue is here, the question of machines versus humans, of some humans being superior to others, like that is all in here. And this is, I wouldn't call this Afrofuturistic, but this definitely doesn't erase non white culture from its perspective. Now, if you don't know what this is about, this is about a young man named Paul Atreus and he is said to be possibly a messiah for people. Basically, in this book, only women can wield magical powers. They, they literally are magical powers. And yet, Paul might be somebody who can tap into that. And he because of this and because of all a lot of political drama going on he his family is exiled and his family is also betrayed and then look we've got gunslingers we've got magic we've got drugs we've got out of body experiences we have a character that is like the craziest thing that i've ever seen in my life and I've actually seen that character in Aragorn, so like, it's just amazing. It has so much in it that I just can't even put it into one video. You, and it's something that you really have to experience for yourself. And in this case, I'm gonna actually, and I always do this, I recommend the audiobook for this that is on Audible, Chef's Kiss. It's amazing. It really draws you in, and I don't know. I just love that this book doesn't steer away from the bad side of people and doesn't steer away from a protagonist that even though he's the chosen one, he's a child and he makes mistakes and he gets beat up and and the relationship between a child and his mother and a mother that knows that her child is the messiah and how she had her part to play in that and it's it's amazing okay it's amazing i love dune please read dune so many things in sci-fi will make sense to you once you read this book it is just incredible but it is not for the faint of heart and i and i am warning you those first 200 pages you are like what the fuck is going on so uh give it time that's it those are my 10 sci-fi recommendations for you but i think in this video it's time i introduce my all-time favorite book because my all-time favorite book is a science fiction book i am lucky enough to have scored two of the only editions i think there really is only like 500 of these in the world and i have two of them and this book is called Eterno Oscuro or The Eternal Darkness by Miguel Angel Yadon. This book is um, basically the story of three astronauts that are on a lifelong mission. They're going to go study a star. And when they get to the place they're supposed to be and they wake up from cryo sleep or whatever they call it. I don't remember what they call it. They find nothing but darkness. And they soon realize that it's a black hole and they realize that they're stuck there there's no going home there's no studying the star and this really messes with them as you can imagine this like destroys their hopes and dreams until the black hole makes contact with them and i can't even explain to you the whole journey this book takes you on because the black hole in this book is basically a uh, god imagine imagine what black holes are to humans they're they're gods that we can't even understand you know and they have the opportunity to, to talk to this god but something goes wrong and they by mistake uh one of the one of the crew members dies and as one would do in a, in a ship in a in the ocean they send him off to space what they don't realize is that the Black Hole was expecting one of them to join them and what he finds is that he mistakes this dead corpse like dead corpse? this corpse to be the one that was sent to him so that he could understand humans and he just sends one message after having like taken in death 
and the one thing he says to them is you are dark beings and now the two astronauts that are left have to convince this god not to go to earth and destroy earth because he says that he has been to so many planets see he has seen so many things but he has never seen a species as dark as ours and he doesn't understand that what he absorbed is just a corpse that humans are not death itself and how do these two wonderful characters explain to this god-like being that he's making a mistake so yeah this is my favorite book of all time you guys all right guys <laughs> that's it those are my top 10 sci-fi uh, recommendations for anybody that hasn't read sci-fi before and for people that have read sci-fi but want to get a little bit more into the genre and the unveiling of my favorite book of all time which is a sci-fi book so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure enough enjoyed making it because my camera battery died two times. I had a class in between and now my mother is cooking. So what you hear, if you can hear it, is the oven in the background. But you know what? I really wanted to get this video done. So I did because I commit to things. Yeah, girl. I do. All right. Without anything else left to say, just a friendly reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Sometimes I'll post on Tuesdays and Thursdays if I'm feeling a little extra. And just might get some videos on Sunday from now on. So basically, I just don't rest. But you know what? I love doing YouTube. I love talking to you guys. I love making videos. So worth the sacrifices. And with that being said, I'm just going to go because I've got another class, honestly. But I could seriously make videos all day long. And thank you so much for liking and subscribing and doing all that fun stuff. All right. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Bye, guys.